making a video on the proper installation of our green APU. First things that we would have to do is to determine where the APU will fit on the truck and the removal of the side fairings and the side steps. The most important part of mounting the APU is determining if you have space. For most trucks, the APU will be mounted in front of the rear tires right between the fairing and the tank. You must have at least a minimum of 24 inches for our green APU to fit. For most trucks, you have no problem, but in other trucks, if you have to make space, you will be able to move the tank forward and relocate brackets to do so. Once you determine that you have a, the appropriate amount of space in the rear passenger side of the truck to mount your APU, you want to be able to Take off the steps and the side skirts of the truck so you have better accessibility to mount an APU and run your coolant lines and your battery cables. For this truck, for 2020 Freightliner Cascadia, you will remove these T40 bolts along the steps and the whole steps will come off the top and the bottom. After you remove the eight T40 bolts on the steps, you're able to remove the top plate and the bottom plate set them to the side and then the side comes off very easy. Once we remove the side steps now we have to take off the side fairing. In order to do that you have to remove these 16 millimeter bolts. It's two up here and two on the bottom and then you have to remove two nice 16 bolts and nuts on the side holding the rear end of the side fairing. The next step into removing the side fairing on this truck, on the Freightliner Cascadia, it will be to remove the 916 bolt that hold this hood strap. Once we remove, remove these bolts, I like to place them in the truck. You're able to take this side pairing off and place it so it does not get damaged. Once you remove the 460 millimeter bolts in front of the side pairing and the two 916 bolt in the back to hold up the side pairing, you're able to gently pull it and This will allow you to have better accessibility to running the water lines and uh, battery cables under the truck. Once you remove the 5 10 millimeter bolts holding the side piece in place, you are able to remove it so you have better accessibility to zip tie in your water lines, your battery cables, and all the rest of the hoses that go to the APU. You can do so just by gently pulling up on it and you take it off. Now you're able to visualize under the truck and have better access. Normally, if you are going to do your install yourself or have your shop do it, or if we're going to do it here at our manufacturing place, our installs come with an install kit, a blower, and our motor. This install kit has everything you will need to install the green APU to your truck. The first step in mounting your APU will be to remove these top two covers, this cover and your front cover so you have accessibility to insert brackets in the back to allow you to mount it to the truck. Once you remove the top cover of the green APU, you will have two brackets and four nuts and bolts, um, one to one and one eighth, the other one's a 15 sixteenths. If you notice, these brackets have a small circle and a big circle. These will fit appropriately over this nut on this bolt on the top. So then you will put the big one on the top and the small one on the bottom. Once you've mounted the brackets, then you're able to mount the APU to the truck. So you take your bracket and put it in here. And put, it in. put the bolt through washer on the other side and install the nut and then same thing the small one goes on the bottom and the bottom will go through here and on the inside sometimes it's a tight fit but you'll be able to have enough room to get the nut and washer so and then the same thing with the other side the other side
these brackets give the APU enough space so that the APU itself does not sit flush with the frame. After you inserted the brackets and the big bolts on top and the small ones on the bottom, you have to tighten it so that way you're able to mount it to the frame. So you take a one and one eighth socket, half inch socket with a half inch gun, and a one and one eighth wrench. Same thing to the other side, so I'm doing these increments. After you do the top two, you want to do the bottom ones. So I'm going to do the top two. The last one, you have to do an open end one, so that way it reaches down and behind all the wires. Now, they are tight and sturdy. Once you determine where you would like to put your APU on the side of your truck, Sometimes you have to take into consideration every truck is different. And for instance, this Freightliner, they have a bracket that supports the cables and the inside of the frame rail. You have to remove that so our APU can sit against the frame. So then after that, you take your mounting blocks and your rubber cushion. And you push this on and it goes onto the frame like this. The big blocks go on the top and the smaller blocks go on the bottom. For easier installation, some people could use a lift cart like we are doing so, and the other option would probably be an engine hoist, and you're able to hang it up and level it so you can put the blocks on. Now once you install the blocks, you have to let the APU free. So we'll drop the cart right now and let it go up against the frame. Now when you determine mounting the APU, you have to go as far as you can to your left. So that way you have much room on your right to install the hoses. The more room, the better. So that way you can prevent any rubbish against the tank and when you're driving down the road. So now we'll go into tightening the APU man, bringing it up so it's tight and level. To do that, you have to first loosen the top and the bottom cover of the five bolts on the top one and the five on the bottom. So that way the case itself can shift and level itself. So now, the top ones, you have to tighten a minimum, minimum of three threads. You don't want to go too much because it squishes the rubber in the back. So then we'll do that. We'll take a 1 and 1 8 socket on a half inch impact and a 1 and 1 8 wrench. You kind of want to go back and forth until they're even so that way it levels it properly. So now, once we got the top ones down, now it is time to adjust the bottom ones. Now the bottom ones are the ones that actually levels the APU. So, again, the top ones you need a minimum of three threads, not too much so it doesn't squish this. And then you can start with either bottom one. You can do the first one first. Now that one you want to go like kind of even with the top two. And then the last one is the one that actually adjusts it. Now that you see that the APU is kind of to the side, you will notice by the cover adjustment. So now once we tighten the last one, you'll see it level itself out and it'll be adjusted. Sometimes you want to give it a little bit to make sure it fixes itself. Now we notice that this one can go over a little bit. So we're going to try the other side, just go back and make sure that the bottom ones are not too loose, and as long as they have a couple of threads. There you go. Now your APU is straight, and you are done mounting it.
Once you have your APU mounted and sturdy, you're able to tighten the top cover and the bottom cover so that way it is tight and you won't forget about it later. You can use either impact gun or a wrench, uh, socket and a wrench. Now you have, you have just enough space on the left side where it's not touching the bolts but you're as far over as possible so that way it makes more room here. Again, you need 24 minimum inches to fit our APU product. After you have your APU mounted, the next thing we would want to do is our fuel pickup tube. In our install kit, we have one fuel pickup tube and we have fuel line. Some trucks, you're going to need two fuel lines, but for the most part, most trucks just need one. So you want to take your fuel line, you want to evenly cut it in half. So that way you can have one for the supply, one for the return. After that, in our install kit, we provide clamps. Little red clamps. So you want to pull these back a little bit and install your clamps already. So that way when you drill into the tank and tap it, we'll be able to connect our fuel lines right after So we're going to take these little red clamps, one on top and one on the bottom. There you go, and then we will have enough room for our fuel pickup tube to go to our APU. Now we're going to go through the process of installing our fuel kit inside the tank. When determining the location on where to put the fuel kit, you don't want to go too close, you don't want to go too far. You want to basically put it directly in the middle. Some trucks have access points where you're able to unscrew it and add an adapter to our fuel kit and it'll fit perfectly. But if for this instance, for this truck, we have to tap. It's a quarter-18 tap and you have to pressurize the tank to prevent any uh, metal sh aluminum shavings going inside the tank and damaging your fuel system. Once you drilled your hole into the tank, you kind of want to make sure it's the size for your tap. It'll fit in just properly, enough so it's not too big. And then now we'll go on to actually tapping the tank and we'll be able to put our fuel kit in. Once you have your hole tapped inside the tank for the fuel kit, now you're able to install your pickup tube. So sometimes on the truck, the cab is a little high or it's a little too low. Sometimes you have to bend this to get it to start and go inside the tank. But then you can always straighten it out as you go on. So like for instance, we'll just bend it just a little bit and then bend it back. And now our fuel kit's in and we're able to start tightening it down. Just like this. So. So for this, to tighten this, you're going to need an 18, 19 millimeter, a half inch, and a 9 sixteenths to tighten all of this. 18 goes around the middle piece. You want to tighten it around. Just so the bottom gets snug. Once it starts getting tight, you give it a little more, and it'll turn by itself. You don't want to over tighten it because you can strip out the threads. Again, this is aluminum, so it strips easy. Then you kind of want to have the fuel spout not facing towards the APU, but kind of facing away. So that way you can use a little loop when you hook them up 
to add slack for future references and future services. Then you take your 916, make sure all the fittings are tight. Usually they come from factory tight, but sometimes you just need to add a little more tight to them. Same thing on this piece right here. Now, the, few, the top of the two will spin, but we're going to lock that into place with our half inch. So once you position it, kind of the same direction, you want to tighten the top piece. It has a crush fitting over there, which will lock it into place. Once you have installed your fuel pickup tube, now it's time to attach the fuel lines. Again, the top gets one and the bottom gets one. You gotta make sure we have a red clamp on there that's provided in an install kit. The bottom one, you just push down there, take your clamp, bring it to the edge, and then put your loom back so that way it looks nice. And we'll do the same to the top. Now, the fuel lines will travel this way and go to the APU. Later on, we'll be able to install all the hoses very neatly and nicely. And nicely. Once you installed your fuel lines to your fuel pickup tube, now you're able to attach it to the APU. So you have two lines, one determining one where to put them on the APU, one has in and the other one has out. The top one is the supply, the bottom is the return. So to make it simplify, the top one of the fuel kit goes to the top of the APU, the bottom goes to the bottom. So we'll start with the bottom. You're going to take off these plugs, you dispose of them, and you take your red clamp. You put your red clamp over your pickup tube. Now you're able to push it on like so, and now you have to move your clamp back. Now, you can shorten your fuel lines if you need to, if you have too much slack, but we find to cut them evenly in half fits perfectly, just in case you have to remove your APU in the future or you want to change trucks with it, or just possibly maintenance it. And there you go, now your APU line, your fuel lines are hooked up. Now we're going to go into installing our battery cables to the batteries and then running them along the truck and attaching them to the APU. There is numerous ways to do this and I found the most simple way on this truck is to run them over the subframe and attach them to batteries and then go down in between the frame rail and attach them to the airlines and you're able to hook it up to the APU. So we have one positive cable and one negative cable. Now once you know the route of where you're going to run your battery cables, you want to toss them over the frame so that way we can go to the other side and attach them. One thing to notice when you're hooking up these battery cables, the positive has one small hole on the battery side. This one's going to go on the battery side because we have to hook it up to a mega fuse so that way it's a safety precaution. Once you have your battery cables ran over the frame and onto the side of the batteries, now we'll go to hook it up. So we have to first remove the top cover that protects the battery. Move this and move this away. So now you can hook up the batteries at pretty much any post you'd like. The best to do is to not have them on the same battery so that way when the APU charges the batteries, it goes through all four of them. Positive. And the negative. So first we're going to hook up the negative. We'll hook it up right here to this first post. Make sure it's tight. Now we'll do the positive. So the positive has a mega fuse. This is a safety precaution. And this one goes on to the side with the small hole right here on the terminal. So we'll put a boot over that, and we'll take this off and 
install it directly to the mega tubes. And on top of that, we'll put a washer, lock washer, and then uh, then we will hook this up to the battery. Now don't forget to tighten down your mega fuse. So now we're able to zip tie and run our battery cables across and we want to make sure when we zip tie we have enough slack so that our cover can go back on. Once we have our battery cables connected, we're going to want to put our battery cover back on. So you kind of want to zip tie them along the factory uh, battery cables so that way they come out of this hole and then you're able to zip tie it along a couple of lines under the truck and then we'll go over the frame. You want to make sure this fits properly so that way it locks into place. Once you put your battery cover on, you're going to want to add some slack on the battery cables before you start zip tying them to go through the APU. So you zip tie along a couple of the lines and then we'll go over the frame and then down under where we'll zip tie the air lines inside the frame rail all the way to the APU. Again, there is numerous ways to run your battery cable. One into consideration, you want to you want to think about basically so that way where your battery cables will not rub or if they fall and get wrapped around something or too close to the exhaust sometimes. Once you hook your battery cables up and ran them along the inside of the frame, you want to be able to hook them up and we provide some two loop clamps at the bottom. You want to make a loop off the battery terminals. So that way if any water gets in there, it goes to the bottom of the loop and not into the terminal itself. And it, that would cause corrosion, so it's just preventive maintenance. And all the access, not much, but there will be some. We just tuck up inside the frame and zip tie them along the mounted block. So now we're going to move to the part where we install our coolant lines to the truck. We install our coolant lines from the APU to the truck, so that way when our APU is running, it heats the block of the engine. So that way in colder weathers, um, it's easier for drivers to start their truck. So we have a supply line and a return line for the APU. Normally we have two lines inside the truck that one is a pressure and a return that goes to the heater core of the cab and the other one is a pressure and a return for the for the bunk heater. So for 2020 Freightliner Cascadia, which are mostly all the same in the coolant lines, we're going to tap into our pressure line, which is this one up here. And then our return is going to go inside to the, the return line right here at the top along with the. The next step in, into installing our cooler lines from, to the main truck's engine is we want to take our three quarter line, it's 32 feet, and you want to be able to fold it in half evenly and zip tie it together like so. You, want to, you do not want to cut these in half, but you do want to mark them. So when you zip tie them, you want to have one side marked with the zip tie so that way you know. For instance, I like to keep this as a return line so I know that this one will go to the top of the APU. Same on the other side, you notice that they are connected and I'll be able to tell as far as I'm connecting them. Once you fold your coolant lines in half and mark them which one's going to be your return, which one that goes to the top of the engine of the APU, so you're going to want to Find a pro appropriate way to run your coolant lines so that way they are not sitting on exhaust and you'll have a clean path to prevent any rub rubbish. So we have two lines. One with the zip tie is going to be our return and the other one is going to be our supply. So the first line we'll install is our pressure line. It's the line that comes out of the cylinder head. And we'll cut right here where this yellow line is and we'll install this TV fitting that we have. The three quarter T. So then we'll be able to connect our cooler lines to that so that we, we can run them to the APU. So that one will come right here and then we'll have a shutoff valve. We like to install shutoff valves because it prevents it preventive maintenance just in case anything happens. So we'll install it right here. So after the T, we'll connect it here and then we'll be able to connect our hose 
right here, and then it'll push back. Just like that. Next, we'll install a return line. Some trucks, you'd have to tap into one of these lines, but for most, most trucks, they have a return rail up here. This will put, take our fitting. It's a three-quarter fitting again. And we'll take out the cap and then screw this in. And then we'll run our coolant lines. You kind of want to have our coolant lines come together. And then you'll install another shutoff valve right next to the other one. So then you'll be able to connect the return line. The return line, again, in my instance, would be with the zip tie. You can do it either or as long as you understand which one you're putting on the zip tie on. Once you've connected your fuel, your water lines, this is what it looks like. Our pressure line goes right here in the back, the one that's towards that comes out of the cylinder head of the engine. So this one comes down, and we install shutoff valves right here. Now again, we install a shutoff valve for the pressure and the return, just for preventive maintenance if anything happens, a hose rupture or water pump goes or anything, keep your truck rolling. Now we go to our return line. A return line goes to the top of the return rail at the top of the engine. And it comes out, and again, we put our shutoff valve right here. These are all held on by three-quarter hoses and three-quarter hose clamp provided into the install kit. Sometimes you want to have to make holes inside of like aluminum places like this where you could install zip ties to secure it. So that way it's not going to rub or bounce around when you're going down the road. After you hook those two up and run them down to the APU, now we're able to install them along the frame and then run them to the APU. Once you hooked up your coolant lines to the front of the engine of the truck, you want to run them to the APU. Every truck is different, so sometimes you may have to run them under the frame or along the frame. But in this instance, we went on the top of the cab, then came down to the frame. You kind of want to make it very sturdy, so that way as the truck moves and it has a lot of motion, your hose is not going to rub. And one thing to think about when you're running these, you want to make sure that they're not too close to the exhaust. The next process into, into our installation process will be to install our alternator signal wire. The alternator signal wire attaches to the truck's alternator so when the truck turns on, the APU senses when that is running and it will shut off after 5 minutes and display an error code of main engine running. So when to determine where to hook this wire up, you have two types of alternators. One alternator has a plug, like for this truck for instance. And other one have post terminals. So you have to find out what prong to insert this wire into. So to do that, you have to start the truck and take a voltmeter and see what post is outputting 14 volts. For this truck, we have a plug where we have to tap into for our alternator signal wire. So when you take out the plug to the alternator, you'll notice that a factory one's all the way to the right. For, mo for every truck that has these plugs for the alternator, you're always going to want to tap into this middle one. So the factory one's all the way here to the right. Ours goes into the middle one, so the second to the left one. And that's, that's the terminal that um, puts out 14 volts when the truck is running. Now other alternators will have posts. So basically you just take a voltmeter and test the post when the truck's running. And you'll be able to do that. Once you've inserted the wire, you want to run this back along with your coolant lines to the back of the APU. After you installed the alternator signal wire to the truck's alternator on the correct post, you're going to want to run it along the frame and run it with your coolant lines to the back of the truck. You can do them at the same time, so it'll be easier for you, so that way you don't have to come back to it. Once we get them all the way down near the APU, the alternator wire will eventually go inside the cab and connect to the harness. This alternator signal wire will um, tell the controller of the APU when the truck is running and it will cause the APU to shut off after five minutes and display an error message saying main engine running. So today we'll be doing the inside of a truck. One thing to consider is that every truck is different and before you drill just be sure what's on the other side to make sure you don't hit anything. So on the inside of a truck there's going to be three hole saws that we use. One's going to be a four inch. We use a four inch for tapping into um, our vent. We have to make a, a hole saw for it so this could fit. And this is roughly gonna fit right here. 
And then we'll also make a hole inside the main truck's vent so we can tap into the main um, air flow so that way it comes out the vents. Second hole saw is a four and a half. A four and a half is our pass through. So our ductwork has to travel sometimes through different parts of the truck to be able to tap into the main ductwork. The last one is one and three quarter. We use this to basically put holes in the floor where we could drop our drain tubes from our HVAC and then also for our harness to run through where we could put our controller. We also have uh, a vent we have. We have to install that in the front right here so that way our HVAC has some fresh air to breathe. So when you place your template on the floor of the truck you're going to want to leave a gap probably about this much away from the front so that way the air has, has fresh air to breathe from. When you drill the hole through the floor of the truck you want to be sure whatever's on the other side you do not hit. So you can do that by putting a drill just a drill bit through to push it through the floor and you'll see it on the other side. So for this truck we're going to put one here and one here. We're going to take our uh, one inch and three quarter hole saw and put a hole through there and a hole through there. This allows us to drop our drain tubes from the blower to the floor so when the, the condenser um, dissolves the ice drains. After you have these two holes drilled you would know where your blower sits and with the template you kind of want to know that your hoses are going to run from the left side down so we're going to make a hole roughly right there with our four inch hole saw and that's where our hoses are going to run through the floor so now we're going to install our vent where our duck hose is going to connect to you want to take a look at your front of your truck of the cab and determine like what kind of center it so you're going to put one right here and that we're going to cut that hole with a four inch hole saw our four inch hole saw allows us to fit perfectly and pop in the split Right next to that, we're going to want to put our vent so our HVAC has room to breathe. You do that by, you could either A, cut four holes, just not as big as this, and then take a whole uh, sawzall and cut them evenly to make a nice square. And once you're done cutting that hole, this will attach right next to it. So, at the end of it, it should look roughly like it. In addition to our vent under the bunk, we want to tap into the truck's main vent system to allow air to come through the vents by the, by the sleeper. So we take a 4 inch hole saw and we want to put it lower into the truck's vent. Roughly about right there. This allows our ductwork to sit snug and allows it to blow the air without coming loose. Then in order to do that we have to have a 4 and a half hole saw put kind of right here. Now we have to put a four and a half hole saw. We kind of have to go through this lower cardboard so our duck hose can pass through it. In order to do that, you can lift it up and you can see this area right here. Our duck hose wants to come up from there. So our hole saw will go about right there and then it will come from our blower, go through the side, and then come up through there and tap into the truck's main vent system. Now that you have the holes drilled for the blower, you gotta have room to get to the truck's vent system by having the ductwork pass through these sidewalls. So in order to do that, we have to take a four and a half hole saw, and we have to bring it up pretty high, not all the way to the top, but right to it. You want to make sure when you drill this hole, it doesn't doesn't hit this. Now our ductwork is gonna pass through here and go inside this one. So with our hole drilled out, like roughly right here. Now we have to go inside this cabinet. This cabinet allows us to go through and have access to tapping into the truck's main vent system. What we usually do is we put a four and a half hole saw right there. This allows us to be roughly the same height so when it travels through here our duck hose could tap into this one. And then under those we'd have to put about a half the size of this so our, our harness could follow this way too. Our harness goes th under the duck hose so that way it could go up and tap inside where we could put our controller. Our last hole saw that we will drill is where our harness is going to come through this wall up here 
and that's where our controller is going to be screwed and mounted to the wall. So you can take your controller and position it and where the cable comes out, where the harness will connect, you kind of want to have a hole saw roughly right under it. Use the one and three quarter hole saw and it'll go about right there. And once you drill that hole, this allows us to have enough to push the harness through and connect it to the controller while we mount it. Once you drilled your holes inside the truck and you know where exactly where you're going to position the blower, you want to feed your harness through the hole in the floor that you made. And you're going to feed it all the way up into where the harness splits into a Y. On that Y, you're going to have one side that goes to the controller. You're going to feed it all the way up and around and through the hole in the plate that you made. Another one is going to connect to the blower itself. You have four connections. One's going to go to the blower itself. One's going to go to the water valve. The other one's going to go to the alternator signal wire, and the last one's going to go to the thermometer that's inside the inside the HVAC. This is a representation of a blower that's already been finished and fully installed and put into the floor. Our hoses on the left side come out and go down into the floor so that they could run to the APU. Now the harness we have, we have the one connection here, that's the therm thermostore. The other one that's right here is the water valve. The blower and the alternator signal wire get connected back there and all the access you kind of just want to make it look clean make it look like a nice good bundle and then we go on to our ductwork and run in our harness to the controller our controller harness comes around over here come through here goes through this wall where you made the four and a half hole saws at up in here and up through the cabinet and out and then our ductworks do the same one comes to the front where we have a vent right here that allows us to have air at our feet. And then the other one is the one that we have to tap into the truck's main vent system. That goes around and into the cabinet and into that four inch hole saw that you guys made into the vent. So our duct work travels through the bottom of this cabinet and comes up through here and attaches in. This thing right here just kind of fits in by a couple threads and it will be very secure and will fit perfectly. So the harness runs out behind the duct work and comes up and right into the hole right here that way you're able to inst install your controller after you rain your harness you want to mount your controller it's just four self-tapping screws and you just want to level it out and then everything will be okay you're ready to run after you hook everything up